Welcome to the Complex Science and Dynamical System Theory online tutorial. This tutorial of 10 modules, as for now, is presented to you by the Advanced Consortium on Cooperation, Conflict and Complexity, the AC4, in the Earth Institute at Columbia University. This is the first module. In this module, Complexity Science in the Context of Scientific Developments, we will look at how scientific development suggests that we cannot understand ourselves, our societies or the natural universe without complexity science. We will see how the progression of Western science has led to the development of complexity science. We will take a look at murmuration, an example of a complex phenomena. Then we will discuss how natural and human questions meet within complexity science. We will have further resources suggested and a quiz to recapture the learning from this module. For thousands of years, scientific thinking has tried to both explain the reality around us and to predict the consequences of events, processes, and our human actions. It has served to organize human knowledge and to promote human progress. Especially in the last 400 years, being the backbone of the modern age of enlightenment, science has branched into various scientific disciplines, such as the physical sciences, life sciences, and social sciences, which developed almost independently. However, since the middle of the 20th century, these different branches of science st started to observe similar problems to which they had no traditional tools to explore. This was the time when science started to identify complexity as the common underlying property to these problems. Putting it simply, any problem in complexity is a problem that Einstein and his peers could not have solved. Let's see this animation. For example, a game of billiard. Einstein could write you an equation and tell you exactly where the red ball is going, how fast it is going, and where it is going to end up. If we scale the billiard balls up to the size of the solar system, then Einstein can still help us. The equations change, but it, if you want to know about the path of the Earth around the Sun, Einstein could write the equation and tell you exactly where both objects are going to be at any point in time. But as we add more and more planets to the problem, it gets too tough for Einstein's to solve. Now if we then increase the number of objects in the problem to millions and even billions of parts, the problem surprisingly become much simpler. And Einstein is back in business. Let's look at an example in which the objects are on a molecular scale. If we want to track the erratic path of an air molecule, we have no hope. But when we have millions of air molecules all together, they start acting in ways that are quantifiable and predictable. On larger scale, across the globe, we cannot study the individual rain droplet and say where it will end up, but we can predict with good certainty when and where it will rain tomorrow. In 1948, an American scientist called Warren Weaver wrote an article titled Science and Complexity, in which he made this exact observation. Science has dealt with two extremes, leaving a huge unattended middle. This middle region is where complexity science lies. As Warren Weaver anticipated, complexity science has developed during the last 65 years, identifying the complex phenomenon in many of the scientific fields and creating interdisciplinary ways and computing models to explore them. Let's look now at what the complex phenomenon looks like.
Wow, how about that? This beautiful demonstration of complexity. How is it part of complexity science? Well, flocks of birds and school of fish are complex systems of many interacting parts. These systems emerge from the interaction of the individual parts and the study of them has been recognized as a new type of science, complexity science. The living world is also a great place to find examples of complex systems, where the actions of individuals turn into the behavior of a group. So complex systems can be found in natural and human world. But what makes the study of this system important? Biologists, physicists, engineers, mathematicians and social scientists are finding that the rules that create order systems from individual behaviors are showing up in many of the different scales and many of the different disciplines. From the molecules in our bodies, to birds' flocks, to human interactions like crowd movements and traffic. Scientists began to realize that they can use and exploit the analogies between the human systems and those of the physical world around us. For example, in a research from UCLA made in 2008, look to the crime hotspots in the city. It seems that there is a pattern of return victimizations, where burglars that are successful in robbing a certain area tend to return to that area and carry on burglaring it. The balance between burglary and security creates the dynamics of crime in the city. It turns out that this is exactly the same process as how the leopard gets his spots, except that in this case the dynamics are of a chemical process that creates the pattern and are called morphogenesis. Science knows a lot about morphogenesis of leopards and it can be suggested that this knowledge be used to create better crime strategies in the city. Further resources are suggested here. In the following modules we will explore much more of the basic principles of these complex and dynamic systems. Please have a look at this quiz. It's not a very complex one and it captures your learning from this module. Thank you very much for exploring module 1. See you in the next modules.